Hello and welcome to News Up Now. I'm Gleitson Martins in San Francisco. Puerto Vallarta in Mexico is one of the best places to visit during winter. The famous town welcomes travelers from all over. Walking on Olas Altas and enjoying the beaches come with a price, the real estate. The sector has added comfort to visitors and opportunity for investors. But how the sector is doing during the pandemic? To talk about that, I'm joined by Ryan Donner from Ryan Donner and Associates in Puerto Vallarta. Hello, Ryan, how are you? And tell me, um, how was the sector before the pandemic and how is it now? If we look at 2019 statistics in real estate sales in Puerto Vallarta, um, the market did pretty well, actually. Um, our biggest year by far was 2018 um, in the number of sales in terms of dollar volume, everything. But 2019 did very well uh, as well. And so we saw about $400 million in sales in 2019, and which equates to probably about 50% uh, of buyers coming from the US, roughly 30% of buyers coming from Mexico, uh, meaning Mexican nationals from places like Mexico City, Guadalajara, um, and 20% of, of buyers actually being Canadian. Um, most buyers are looking for two bedroom, uh, two bathroom condos and specifically in the Zona Romantica area or the Old Town neighborhood, um, which is closest to the bars, the beaches, the restaurants, the places that people want to hang out and be at. The reason that we're seeing such a decline or, or a slowdown in the market really is due to the pandemic because what really affected us is what's considered kind of our high season when people from the U.S., especially from San Francisco, come down here, um, that time frame was hit by the pandemic. And so because of that, we didn't see the same tourism numbers that we normally see. And if we can't show property, um, then obviously we can't sell property. <laughs> so we saw quite a, a big uh, decrease in the number of sales. What is next? I mean, if you cannot, as you said, you cannot show a property for a, a possible client, so what's going to happen? Are you able to show at least uh, like a virtual? Yeah, so that's where technology has really come in handy this year. Obviously, we've been using technology for a long time to, to sell property here in Puerto Vallarta in Mexico. Um, but this year in particular, it has come in really handy. So things like virtual tours using a Matterport, for example, um, where we can go in as realtors, scan the property, and then buyers can actually walk through the property virtually um, without even having to leave the comfort of their home. And so what we're seeing now are a lot more sales happening that way, where agents are doing virtual tours either through things like Zoom or FaceTime or whatever they use uh, electronically to show the property to their clients, um, which is now resulting in an uptick in sales, um, I, I'm happy to report. <laughs> the high season in Puerto Vallarta starts around uh, just right before Thanksgiving, right? And goes through, what, second, uh, to, through March, April of the fall? Yeah, exactly. Year. Typically till about Easter. So w w can you give me a sense of what's going to happen when this high season starts? <laughs> if I had a crystal ball, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> but um, I think what's, what it's really going to boil down to is kind of the U.S.'s response and how well they can maintain and control the virus. Um, and then also Mexico's response, because if we can't get things under control, then it's going to mean that people aren't as willing or they're more nervous about traveling to Mexico. Um, if things are under control, then I think we'll start to see numbers increase in terms of tourism, in terms of uh, sales, in terms of, of just general traffic to the area. But I think what, this, what there's going to be a huge difference in this year versus previous years is the number of Mexican nationals who are going to be traveling in, uh, nationally instead of going internationally. So a lot of times people from Mexico City, Guadalajara, Monterrey, these larger cities, um, they like to go to the U.S. They like to travel to you know, other wealthy cities. Uh, but I think what we're going to see now is those same people, instead of traveling to the U.S., they're going to be staying in places like Puerto Vallarta or Nuevo Vallarta. Um, so I think we'll see more Mexican tourism this year versus previous years. Um, and I'm hopeful that we'll see U.S. tourism increase as well. Well, we all hope for a, a better season, of course. Average price of a house in 2019 was over 300 uh, uh, 
US dollars. So yeah. now the price is still up, but the sales are going down. Exactly. We're kind of at this strange crossroads where sale, uh, listing prices are going up. So, so the price of a property in, in Puerto Vallarta is increasing, um, but number of sales is going down. So what we really have to look at in the next couple of months, keeping in mind that on average, it takes about two months, 60 days to close a property as a foreigner uh, in Mexico. So what we really have to look at are what are the pending sales? What sales are going into escrow and moving forward um, right about now to then gauge what's going to happen within the next two months till the end of the year. Um, if we see pending sales increase, then obviously we'll see uh, the number of sales go up um, by the end of the year. But if, uh, if those pending sales don't happen, then those numbers aren't gonna continue to, to increase. So can you give me a brief uh, explanation how it works? Like an American goes to Puerto Vallarta and say, hey, Ryan, I wanted to buy a, a house. So that person will be the owner of that house or is that through a bank, a trustee? Yeah, so the whole buying process of purchasing real estate in Mexico is actually very similar to the U.S. There aren't too many uh, dissimilarities. The major difference is that in what is considered the restricted zone, which is about 30 miles from the coast and 60 miles from the borders of Mexico. Um, within that zone, you're not actually able to purchase the property outright. So how do we get around that? We buy the property through a bank trust. It's called a fideicomiso. And the trust works a lot like a living trust in the US. So the trust is good for 50 years. If you ever reach the end of that 50 years, then you can renew it for another 50. Um, and it has a yearly fee of around 500 US dollars per year to manage that trust. The cool thing about owning a trust in Mexico, and now we're actually starting to see more Mexican nationals own this way as well, is that you can name your beneficiaries. So if you're a husband and wife, uh, you can be the beneficiaries, but then you can name your children as the substitute beneficiaries. So that in the event that something happens to both people, uh, it can automatically be passed down to their children. So it makes it a much cleaner process to own. Um, the property in reality um, with you know, a um, small fee. There is a lot of confusion sometimes uh, whether mortgages are possible here in Mexico. And absolutely, you can get a mortgage. Typically, you can't use a bank from the U.S. to get a mortgage down here. Um, I've yet to find one um, that will offer financing for Mexico. But um, there are lots of banks in Mexico that will offer financing. And there are two major companies in Puerto Vallarta that help foreigners find financing for property. So it's interesting, too, because I've seen a lot more clients lately who, while they might even have the cash to purchase a property, they've decided that they want to stay liquid with that cash, but then they're opting to get a mortgage down here in Mexico and then use their rental revenue to pay that mortgage, um, and, but still have the money in the bank that they need to in case an emergency or something happens for a rainy day. It will be interesting to see how um, people, beachy goers, uh, when they go to the beach, which is, it gets really packed in Puerto Vallarta, wearing a mask. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, they've done a better job at, uh, at spacing, like, the palapas and the beach chairs further apart. So they do have kind of their social distancing guidelines in place. But, um, yeah, definitely if you're going in a group of people or something, then I don't know if everyone's going to want to wear a mask down at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting scene, actually. Thank you so much, Ryan. I appreciate your time. Oh, of course. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please let us know at tips at newsupnow.org. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.